Good morning, good morning. Marmalade here. How's everybody doing? I hope well. Uh, the reason for this video is, is the channel update. I've got two pretty exciting uh, hikes coming up that I want to let you know about and keep you informed so you can look forward to watching them. And they're both coming up soon. Well, let's go over the one that's coming up soonest, actually right around the corner. So today is Monday, September 7th, Labor Day. Happy Labor Day, everybody. Hopefully you're not having to work. But um, I want to go over the, the hike that's coming up very soon. And it's coming up, I'm going to be starting next Monday, the 14th. This is kind of an interesting hike. I'm actually really, really excited about this hike. And it's something that I did not plan. Uh, I'm having to cram and kind of do the plans now. But it's the LCT, the Lost Coast Trail. You may or may not know about it, but uh, I have heard of it, but honestly knew nothing about it. And just how things work out, I was watching YouTube and a video popped up and I was like, oh, is that what that is? So I started researching it. Then I joined a Facebook group like I did. I did one for the long trail and got a lot of good information for people doing the long trail. So I've now joined a group on Facebook for uh, the Lost Coast Trail. And this hike is very, very intriguing. So let's go over what it's about and how long it is and all that. So first off, I found out that you need a permit and I was a little disheartened because I have the time to do it now. So I'm like, well, I'm just going to go do it. Then I find out you need to uh, get a permit like I did for the Sierra. So I go on there and they, I guess they give out 60 permits per day. And most people go on this trail from March to October when the weather's better because it is in Northern California on the coast. And so I go to recreation.gov like I did for my other permit. I look on there and every permit for every day until December, which is horrible weather, is taken. I'm like, oh man. So... I'm kind of late to the party here so I just kind of resigned myself to thinking well I'll just do it next year or whatever and then in the group I kind of asked the question and they said that basically like the PCT and everything else um, and and the Sierras people get the permits way ahead of time and then they put them back when they get closer to the date so they said keep trying so I kept trying and within about three days there were some permits available for the 14th and I took one so um, this is the plan right now and actually before we get to the plan let me show you a few pictures of the Lost Coast Trail here So the plan is probably the day, day and a half before my hike, I'm going to drive up there. It is from Southern California, Northern Cal, about 11 hours with no traffic getting up there. So I may cut it into two days or just go up. I don't know. I want to get up there with some time uh, the day before I start hiking so I can explore a little bit. I'll either car camp or get a campsite somewhere up there and then start first thing in the morning. Uh, the trail is 24.6 miles and starts on the southern, well, you can do it northbound or southbound, but the southern terminus is Black Sands Beach. And that trailhead is very close to Shelter Cove. So I'll uh, go into Shelter Cove, park somewhere there, and then just hike over to Black Sands Beach. And like I said, it's 24.6 miles north along the coast, and you end up at Matoli Beach Trailhead. One of the issues I'm going to have is... Uh, that most people like to go southbound and I guess the reason for it is and like I said I'm new to this is that the, generally speaking the winds at your back it's just not like buffeting your face the whole time from the wind uh, and they stage their cars on the south there's a person in town or there's a, a van service but they charge an arm and log at leg it's like $85 something crazy per person up to four people to take you up to the northern terminus the Matoli uh, trailhead so you can hike down um, and then somebody told me the rumor is, and I could be wrong, so if some of you that know this, maybe you could tell me. Somebody told me, like, if you're by yourself, the guy still charges you $85 times four because it's not worth his time or whatever. So um, I'm hoping that's not true. But right now, my plan is I may have to just yo-yo it, which means you go up and back. So I may start on the south where my car is, go up. It takes about two and a half days each way. I mean, it depends on how fast or slow you are, but I could do 10, 10, and about five and then do the five and do five more back and, and try to camp at different spots on the way back. So I may do that and take five days to do the whole yo-yo, so I'll go up and back. Uh, but um, if any of you are watching live up there and know of somebody that could give me a break on the price, uh, for I'd pay somebody $50 to take me up there and get me started. That would save me a lot of time and help. Uh, I want to start on the 14th, so I'd love to get a ride on the 13th up there I can camp somewhere up there on the trailhead and start in the morning so if that's possible please uh, direct message me down here let me know if you could do that be glad to pay you for it I just think $85 times four just to get a 50 mile ride is not worth it one of the main issues when you hike this trail is there are three areas that are impassable high tide areas so when the tide is high uh, you cannot there's just there's basically beach and cliffs you cannot get by so you have to plan your days and your hike around um, the high and low tides it happens twice a day for both so uh, I'm in the process of getting the title uh, 
charts to see how it's going to look for those days so i'll know more about that when i get closer uh, i am glad the weather's supposed to be good i mean obviously weather in northern Cal i'm from the bay area in northern california and it can change on dime but the weather's supposed to be good it's going to be the every day looks the same about 65 high uh, right on the beach and about 49 to 50 at night which is perfect to me some interesting facts about the trail is um you need a bear caster there are bear and there's a lot of different animals i'm hoping that i get to see a lot there's the seals you know in the water um supposedly fox uh bear hopefully i don't see bear but you know so i have to do have to bring my bear canister um what's interesting even though you're going along the coast there's uh, steep mountains there and the rivers come down to feed you fresh water so uh, i've been told by people on the in the group on facebook that there's water somebody who's there a week ago said there's water every one to three miles so i don't What's great is I only have to carry about a liter, a liter and a half, and that'll counteract having to carry more water and counteract the weight of my bear canister. So that's nice. And lastly, uh, what's really cool is there are, like the PCT, there are worn out spots where you set up your tent and you camp, but you literally can camp anywhere within reason. You know, I, I, I follow the leave no trace principle, so I'm not gonna go lay my tent on some flowers or grass or something, but uh, you can be right on the sand. I mean, obviously you have to worry about high tide and stuff, so you have to be smart about that, but um, you can just, camp anywhere so my theory is if I do yo-yo and go up and back I'm gonna camp at set spots that I'm gonna predetermine especially uh, depending on the tide but then when I go up and come back I'm gonna try to camp at two different unless I get a really killer spot I'm gonna camp at different spots just to change it up some and have a different experience so th this hike will either be about two and a half days or it'll be five depending on uh, what happens with the ride so yeah please if you know anybody or you even have a relative up there that you can make a call help me out that would help a lot so I thought I'd use the channel to ask for that. And uh, you know, generally when you're hiking, the trail provides. So uh, my last resort will be when I'm in town to ask around a little bit, find out if there's somebody that would just do it for me that lives there. So um, I'm gonna try to do that. So anyway, I hope you follow along. It's gonna be majestic. If you just look up the Lost Coast Trail, yeah, please come along, that's exciting. Uh, let me know what you think. And if you know about the trail, if you've done it, if you have any tips or any help. Uh, this one I'm planning uh, with, literally I'll be on the trail within two weeks of getting the permit and even thinking about doing it. So it's gonna be exciting because sometimes the over planning, which is my style, takes away from, I already know what I'm gonna expect, but a lot of this is gonna be, I'm, I'm not gonna know what to expect. So anyway, come along for that journey. So that's hike number one. Okay, and hike number two, I'm exceptionally excited about. Since becoming a backpacker, you know, four years ago, I've actually had this on my radar and it's a local hike, but is the Trans Catalina Trail on Catalina Island. I want to say a two hour boat ride outside uh, the Southern California coast, kind of near Orange County in LA. You go out about, I've been there once, uh, actually via a small plane, which was a crazy story. But uh, I've been invited by Andrea and Rick. Here's their picture here. My new friends, Rick and Andrea. Hello. And uh, one of the hardest things is you also need a permit for this hike. And there's only so many camp spots. And um, so it's very limited. And that's, actually, it's a bit pricey. You have to pay for the boat ride out there. The camp spots every night. Uh, some of the camp spots are on the beach, and you have there's water in some of the places, like fountains. But some of the places have no water, so they you pay extra for delivery of water and firewood. So you can have firewood on the beach. So I want to say, and I actually don't know because I haven't gotten that far yet. But I want to say we're doing a five day and four night uh, hike, which I should tell you, it is 38.5 miles. The first day is about 10 miles, so we'll chop up all the rest of the days. Uh, into like five point something to eight or nine mile days. So they're not going to be long days, which is really nice. I told you that's the, the direction I'm going. There is some steep up and downs on this trail that's not graded like the PCT. So, um, you know, if we have a, I don't know, thousand, two thousand foot climb, at least we only have a six mile day. So it's not going to beat us up like you would on a PCT where it's, you know, 20 mile day. So it's going to be uh, a, more of a, a beautiful leisure uh, hike as opposed to trying to bust out a lot of miles. How this works is we will uh, carpool from Southern California where we both live uh, near each other and carpool up to San Pedro uh, up on the coast and then take the two hour boat ride over to Avalon. And then on the way back, we'll, we'll leave from two harbors and go back to San Pedro and then drive back. So it's gonna be nice that we live in the same area, can carpool and kind of split the cost, which will be really nice and convenient for both of us. They have also invited another young man to come with us, and uh, I don't know him personally, but definitely we'll introduce him when we are hiking. And thankfully, uh, they've done all the planning laid out. You know, they've not only made the reservations, they've got the permits, but where we're gonna camp, 
uh, they've sent me an itinerary of each day and how much uh, difficulty or not each day is, how many miles, what we should see, where we're gonna camp, all that, so it's great. I have it all laid out, and uh, for me it's easy, I just show up and hike. Um, one of the really, really intriguing things about the island is that there are bison all over the island. And how this happened is, and uh, I don't know the years, and you guys can correct me on this, but I was told uh, in the 20s or 30s they were filming a movie out there and uh, they brought something like 13 bison out on the island to film the movie and it either didn't end up happening or they uh, didn't the movie never came out whatever happened they left the bison on the island and i imagine way back when there wasn't many people if anybody on the island anyway and they have now since repopulated so it's going to be really interesting i'm really looking forward to, i've never seen a bison in person i think i've seen buffalo but not bison but uh they're also kind of ornery so you know the one thing is to stay clear of them a little bit to stay at least a few hundred yards away but I definitely want to get them on video if I see some. Uh, there's also other wildlife like fox. Um, you know, when when you see me hiking in campgrounds or like in the Sierras, they have bear boxes. Well, they have fox boxes. They're the exact same box, but they don't have bear on the island, but they have fox, and I guess they're pretty crafty. So we put our food at night in the fox boxes. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, eagles, all kinds of stuff. So I'm looking forward to seeing what we see out there. And we're on an island, which is, uh, I've watched a bunch of videos because I've been watching it for years because I've been wanting to do it for years and the views are stunning it almost reminds me of being on a mountaintop on hawaii but the views you know the blue water and the and we'll be down camping on the beaches and just it's going to be an amazing trip and i just cannot wait to bring you along all right well that's enough jabber and i hope you'll come along for both of these like i said my first one the lost coast trail is coming up uh in a in a week on uh, september 14th and then uh the trans catalina island trail on catalina island is September 10th, no, excuse me, October 10th to the 14th. So five days and four nights. So follow along. And actually for the first one, the Lost Coast Trail, I may or may not join some people or do an extended uh, journey and hike, maybe in the Sierras with somebody on the way back. So depending on the timing, how long it takes me to do, if I can get through the um, Lost Coast Trail in two and a half days instead of the whole five having to do the whole yo-yo, uh, my way back, I might stop by the Sierras and hike with some friends and do a couple days doing that so i might bring you along for that so stay tuned i'll know more and i'll be able to actually probably tell you why i'm hiking once because by then i'll know but uh a week from now i'll be on the lost coast trail can't wait all right see you guys down the trail